Hello, I'm Johannes from Exergy Simulation. Thanks for attending my talk on the a numerically robust six equation two phase flow model for stationary and moving systems in Modelica. And thanks also to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present our joint work. So, why should we model two phase flow in more detail in a system model? Motivation comes from a research project which is called NACOLEC. And this is about the cooling of power electronic devices and aircrafts. So you have this classical setting of a cooling circuit with some device emitting some heat during operation and that then exposing some temperature to the evaporator and then the coolant mass flow just transport the heat. And that device is thought to be passive. Passive means this is driven just by natural circulation. So why should we do that? Well, if that works, you can potentially save a lot of mass by saving the compressor and some equipment. And eventually you could also save maintenance effort. That sounds attractive, but the question is, is that reliable under aircraft operation conditions? Or rephrased, what is the effect of aircraft operation on two-phase flow? And that comes to the point that you want to know, okay, there will be external forces from that movement of the aircraft. So vapor and liquid phase may move in different directions. Also, that could induce what I call fast dynamics. So we could have a mix of coolant, liquid and vapor phase that are not in thermal equilibrium. Okay, so there is a need for a physics-based 1D pipe model still a system model, but it should be able to support two-phase, one-phase flow, but it should allow parallel and counter flow of the phases to account for these external forces. It should also include the possibility to capture non-equilibrium of phases. Basically, this is what we want to achieve for the model. Let me introduce the model and its principles. The model is based on a finite volume discretization with distinguished control volumes for the vapor and the liquid phase. It comes with an energy balance, mass balance, and momentum balance for both phases, and that's altogether six equations, which is how the name six equation model comes about. Now, if you look at it, we have the pipe, and it's subdivided into sections. Now, each section has a parameter constant Length, but inside each section, we assume mechanical equilibrium. So what does it mean? We assume there is one static pressure, but the volume fraction of the vapor and the liquid phase that can change dynamically. And so, what we effectively do is a finite volume discretization based on finite volumes that change in time. So we have based the model on the Clara library's infrastructure because we don't want to reinvent the wheel because that library already comes with fast computing fluid models and it also comes with some structure for heat for replaceable models for heat transfer, pressure loss, phase change, phase separation and geometry. And of course, this has to be elaborated on because if we want to really go to a six equation models, these flows that enter the balance equations. These flows are, there are many flows now, new flows occurring. These blue, these, these blue items here will be additional effects coming from the coupling of the phases that you have to additionally capture with the model. Additionally means additionally to a doubling of the equations due to liquid and vapor phase. Okay, so. That's what we want to do, and the connectivity should be close to what to these to the conventional models. So we have an inlet and an outlet. It's basically two fluid parts, one for vapor, one for liquid phase, having the static pressure and the mass flow as variables. Additionally, we have frame connectors, and these frame connectors from the Modelica standard library basically capture the actual position and the dynamic change of the position in order to infer the, the forces, the resulting forces on and the, their effects on the model. 
Additionally, we have a heat port to capture the wall heat transfer. And yeah, this model should have all this checked. Yeah, so external forces and fast dynamics should be supported. So let me tell you a bit about our experience when we constructed that model. We started off actually by using specific quantities like specific enthalpy for liquid vapor and also specific momentum, that is velocities for liquid and vapor, and the static pressure and the vapor volume fraction that you get from the mass balance through summary formulation. So that's the traditional approach. But of course, not of course, but what we saw is that's numerically really ill-behaved. And at the vanishing of a phase, these specific quantities are not very defined. Okay, you see it already, yeah. And additionally, if you have this vapor volume fraction as a state, then it could happen numerically that um, the condition that it's be, be in between zero and one, that this is violated and that causes um, instability of the model and numerical errors are propagated and amplified and finally the model crashes. So one could try to modify then this balance, these balance equations for these quantities such that you somehow regularize those cases, but the, finally you end up with a mess of rules and switching back and forth between some regula regulated branches. Um, then we decided to step to take one step back and the idea was, okay, we should use absolute quantities that are countable. Countable means they can be, can, means they can be expressed without referring to time-changing volume fractions or masses. And that would be then, that would then, then infer that balance equations are valid without modifications for all volume fractions. That's a big advantage. So we can just skip all these rules that we had before. And at the vanishing of a phase, we can regulate the flows. Yeah? We can do regulated flows and we can also do regulated specific quantities. But that's much simpler to do it because we keep the state equations untouched. And this, how is, this, this is how the model looks like. We have energy balance for internal energy mass balance and momentum balance, and we pick up two more equations because we are now dealing with absolute quantities. And so we choose here the absolute enthalpy, and why? It's simply because this allows us to derive static pressure and vapor volume fraction in a simple algebraic way from the states. Moreover, writing up these time evolution equations for this absolute enthalpy uncovers the nice, nicely the interaction of the vapor and liquid phase, because if we look at these equations, we see for a stationary, stationary vapor volume fr fraction that this time evolution is decoupled, yeah, it's decoupled for the phases. And as soon as the vapor volume fraction changes with time, we pick up these coupling terms here. So you can nicely see what is going on in the model. Additionally, we have we realized that it's very it's an advantage numerically to to go with a zero equation turbulence model, and to, that means in order to compute the momentum transfer or the pressure loss between liquid wall, vapor wall, and the interaction between the phases, you would compute an effective dynamic viscosity for all for every phase that is corrected has some correction by the Reynolds number. And then you use this classic approach that you have the force is proportional to a velocity gradient times the dynamic viscosity times a characteristic contact surface. Now you see already these two qualities you need to have from the spatial distribution of the phases. And this approach gives you effectively a zeta times velocity squared approach that you know from conventional models. And it allows you in a consistent way to model all these interactions. Now, let's take a look at the test cases. So how does the model really behave? Here's one simple tester that we saw at the beginning. That's the horizontal pipe. It's filled half with liquid and water. And then this pipe is turned by 90 degrees down. So 
you would expect the liquid should go down and the vapor should go up. Yeah? And that's precisely what we see here. Yeah? Close to the inlet, you see that we have 50% liquid and it should go, should the liquid fraction could, should go down to 0%. Close to the outlet, we have 50, start from 50%, it should go, down, go, go up to 100%. And in the center, we have we stay with 50% simply because we have chosen an odd number of control volumes. And this is how it looks like. Yeah? So that's, we have the inlet, the outlet, and the center. And if you go back, then the system will, after some waves and some oscillations, it will go back to the initial steady state. Okay, that looks plausible. So here comes a slightly more advanced tester, which is also challenging for CFD tools. This is a tilted pipe. It's tilted, it's oriented downward. And it has at the inlet vapor injected, it goes into the pipe. Yeah. And the pipe at the outlet is at the bottom, it's connected to a two-phase tank with phase separation, so liquid and vapor phase. Now, the center section of the pipe is heavily cooled. It's cooled such that condensation occurs and the condensation master rate is larger than the vapor master rate that enters the pipe from the inlet. So what happens is, first we have liquid, the liquid should rinse down the pipe into the tank, but because we have this high condensation rate, there is a low pressure and then through this low pressure, vapor should be sucked from the tank into the pipe. And this is what we see in the steady state here. Here is the vapor volume fraction over the length. You see it's first it's constant in the condensation zone, it goes down and then it stays constant again. And for the mass flows, we see the vapor is first has a positive mass flow. It's going from inlet to outlet, and then it's getting negative because there it's going from outlet to inlet. And for the liquid, there's first no liquid, and then liquid goes up towards the outlet. Okay, so that seems, looks good. And the last example I want to present you is our rotated cooling circuit from the beginning. And that's the scenario. So the circuit is heated up until a steady state and then it's turned in the, within 10 seconds about 20 degrees in the, around the clockwise and then it's left there for five minutes and then it's turned back. And so we see the heat flow that is taken by the coolant mass flow and we see also the mass flow of the, of the vapor inside the evaporator here. So the model can deal with these kinds of problems. Okay, let me summarize. I have just gives you some, I have just sketched to you the realization of a six equation modelica model for two phase flows under external forces. And I hope uh, you have, uh, I have convinced you that it's realized in a numerically robust way. Currently the model is at development status. So that means there will be next steps and the next step will be to implement a flow regime dependent phase separation that gives us more realistic contact surfaces and characteristic lengths. So right now for our experiments, we assume ideal phase separation, but certainly that is just part of the story. Moreover, we will extend the model to inert gases and liquids in order to make it applicable to these planned applications. And that's of course cooling circuits under external forces start up, shut down, failure of process plants, and filling, emptying of piping systems. And we plan to make this model available in the Clara Plus library in one of the next releases. Okay, thanks for your attention, and I'm looking forward to your questions.